Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. The Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Romans Chapter 5 Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who was the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Our text for meditation is Romans chapter 5 and verse 19. Reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Again, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Romans chapter 5 and verse 19. Today's message is entitled, Christ's perfect obedience can be ours. Christ's perfect obedience can be ours. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will help us to understand your word today. For Christ's sake, 
Amen. For many years, Monterey, a California coast town, was a pelican's paradise. As the fishermen cleaned their fish, they flung the offal, the intestines and the guts to the pelicans. The pelicans would eat the offal and the birds grew fat, lazy and contented. Eventually, however, the offal was utilized and there were no longer snacks for the pelicans. When the change came, the pelicans made no effort to fish for themselves. They waited around to be fed offal, which, were not, which was not there, and they grew gaunt and thin. They waited around and grew gaunt and thin. Many starved to death. They had forgotten how to fish for themselves. The problem was solved by importing new pelicans from the south, birds accustomed to foraging for themselves. These new birds were placed among their starving cousins, and the newcomers, the new pelicans, immediately started catching fish. Before long, the hungry, starving pelicans followed their example and the famine ended. Friend of mine, the Bible presents Jesus as our example in all things. Scripture tells the story, a story so important for every human being to know. The Bible says, on the one hand is presented the disobedience of Adam with its consequences. On the other hand, the obedience of Jesus Christ. The Garden of Eden was disgraced by Adam's disobedience, but as by that one transgression many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one many are made righteous. The world has been honored with the presence of one man who was holy and entirely obedient, one who not only believed and taught the claims of God's law, but who lived the law. His whole life was a representation of its holy principles. His obedience was manifested in the awful agony he endured in the Garden of Gethsemane, and through his suffering he has brought pardon to the disobedient. Friend of mine, when Christ gave to his disciples, when Jesus gave to his disciples the conditions of salvation, he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You see, friend of mine, self-denial, giving up our own will and our own desire to do as we please, self-denial and the crosses lie directly in the path of every person who would follow Jesus. Our advance heavenward will be opposed at every step for Satan will come in between us. Our advance heavenward will be opposed at every step, for Satan will come in many ways to mislead, to deceive, and to clothe sin with the appearance of good. And so, friend of mine, I would urge you carefully to consider the self-denial and the self-sacrifice that Christ has endured in your behalf, that you, friend, if you choose, may have that happiness and peace in this life which he alone can give, and to have also an eternity of bliss and happiness by and by. Friend of mine, are you not willing to deny self for Christ's sake, to consider how you can do him service, who has done such service for you in redeeming your soul from the power of sin and Satan? When upon the earth, Christ said of himself, I am among you as he that serveth. Jesus did not seek to obtain the highest place, for he was meek and lowly in heart. And so he invites you, friend of mine, to learn of him, to wear his yoke, the yoke of obedience to every precept of Jehovah, 
by the grace and the power of Jesus. We obey not to earn points with God like the Pharisees. We obey from hearts of love, full of gratitude for what God has done for us in taking the punishment for our sins on a hill called Calvary. Friend of mine, why not say, Jesus, help me to be obedient to you as you are obedient to your Father while on earth? Let us pray, loving Heavenly Father, bless that boy, that girl, that man, that woman who put aside the time to hear your word. May this day be one filled with blessings. For them is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.